All right, what's up everybody? Welcome to another video. And uh, just doing some cleaning out here in the garage today. So I thought it'd be a great idea to take uh, stuff before I put it away or before I organize it or whatever and do a video, a refresher video and a more complete video on how to get started airbrushing, right? So if you're looking to get started airbrushing, um, this is a pretty good video to show you what you need, what, what you might want to take into consideration. And yeah, just some general steps uh, to get you going in the right way. So <clears throat> obviously, first thing uh, most people want to find out is what kind of airbrush they should get, right? So the two most uh, common styles are these top feed airbrushes and these bottom feed airbrushes, right? Or siphon feed, as people like to call them. Uh, and as you can see here, the top feed loads paint on the top. It's very limited to how much paint you could uh, have. And these bottom feed airbrushes actually suck paint up through a tube from the bottom. And uh, you can uh, you, you can actually like, you know, get a big bottle for this. And if you need to spray a whole large area without stopping, you can do that with these. That being said, uh, these kind of have their, their giveaways and their takeaways, you know, like their goods and their bads. The top feeds um, are usually a lot more precise um, as the paint sits directly ready to spray. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like instant action, right? So as soon as you pull back on the trigger, uh, paint will come back. Both of these airbrushes are dual action airbrushes. Uh, and that means that you can push down for the paint. And let me turn on the air here. I mean, you push down on this trigger and that activates the air and when you pull back that activates the paint coming out the other side there okay so <clears throat> um, you have two actions on the single lever here so push down for air pull back for paint right you always want to push down first and then pull back because if you pull back and then push, you're going to get like a big splatter of paint onto your whatever you're painting, right? So usually the top feet are a lot more precise because the paint sits ready to spray. And these, um, you know, usually they're pretty good, pretty consistent. Um, but I would more recommend this for something where you're going to need to switch constantly colors like t-shirts, right? So if you need to switch colors or you just need to have a lot of paint ready all the time, these are great for that. If you're going to be painting like miniatures, if you're more like into fine art um, and just in general, you know, just going to be painting smaller things, maybe just privately painting for yourself. You don't plan to like uh, sell paintings or anything like that. These are probably a lot better for you. Um, the reason for that is just a speed thing, right? So these ones allow you to work a lot faster, a lot more without stopping, right? So these are actually like, what I would call like workhorse type airbrushes. And this is a Badger Anthem 155. I'll put a link down in the description to just about everything you'll need, right? So I'll put a link to the airbrush, to the bottles. Uh, I'll put a link to this airbrush here, which this is the Master Airbrush uh, G22, I believe. Um, yeah. Um, and so, I'll put a link down to these down in the description, but that way you have a good idea of which airbrush you should be getting and what you should be looking for. These are, you know, more slow, more precise. Um, you know, they're kind of limited in their paint um, reservoir, you know, as whatever size it is. They do sell ones with big cups and stuff like that. But to me, that kind of defeats the purpose. If you need that, you should get one of these. If you want it precise, get one of these. If you need to spray a lot, get one of these. Right, so uh, pick your poison. They're both gonna spray about the same, and if you get like a, a really nice bottom feed airbrush, say like a, a Iwata Eclipse a BCS, or even this Badger Anthem 155, you're able to get like uh, pencil thin lines um, with practice, right? So <clears throat> both of these work pretty good. Again, I would recommend this a lot more though if you're gonna be doing a lot of precise uh, you know, work. If you're going to be doing a lot of really fine lines and stuff like that, definitely the bottom feed over the top feed. If you want to do t-shirts though, 
and you want to make money, I would definitely recommend getting a bunch of bottom feed airbrushes. And I mean a bunch. I mean at least three. So you can have a white and a black and one for colors. And that'll set you off pretty good. Because um, again, with painting t-shirts, it's all about speed. And you're going to need to be fast. Another thing I recommend to get right off the bat is paint, right? So at any given time, I house about that many colors. All those colors are different in this thing. Some of them are big bottles, right? If I use a lot of that color, or if I had a big project working with that color, I use a lot of fluorescent green, a lot of black, a lot of white, a lot of airbrush cleaner. Um, and then all these other colors, right? Yellow, peach, uh, just depends on what you find. And some colors, like these pearlized colors, I only keep little bottles of. So I'd already recommend to have a ton of paint, right? So I have my paint bottles, right? So this is like my t-shirt setup right here. I have my airbrushes and there's another one sitting in there. And then I have all my paint bottles. Uh, as you can see, I keep them capped. Uh, so the paint stays kind of good in there. None of this paint in these is reduced, right? So you add reducer to these <coughs> and the paint will start to harden like almost right away. Um, Createx says about 48 hours. Uh, but I'd say after a day, you're going to notice you're going to get like a uh, weird sprays and stuff like that. So all I do is take one of these, shake it up real good, you know, and then I hook it up onto my bottle and it's ready to go. You know, I usually just clear out this thing, you know, this little pinhole right here, and you're good to go. <clears throat> and that's usually, you know, my t-shirt setup is set up like that. I grab the colors I need and I go from there. And it's like a hot swap thing. So... If you're doing that I keep a big bottle like this with water <clears throat> and I like to put a mixture like a couple drops of uh, dish soap and a little bit of Windex in there just a little like bit of Windex and that seems to clean out my airbrushes like really good like it gets most of the colors out of there if I get some backwash and stuff shh, you don't even notice them um, you know you don't notice any of that I also keep airbrush cleaner um, but I use this more as an actual like if I'm going to scrub it down or something's kind of giving me problems. Right, so again, I've got lots of paint bottles. If you have a top feed airbrush, you don't have to worry about getting paint bottles. You can just get the colors you want of paint, right? But, um, you know, I would recommend getting as many colors and as many paint as possible. Always, I always have tons of paint, tons of colors. Um, and as you can see, I usually have them up in the videos and stuff like that, but... This is actually how I store it. I keep it in here and then it goes in the drawer down there. Um, so it keeps it away from, you know, dust and heat and cold and all that. It stays nice and safe down there. Uh, so it's good. And then after that, I have my stencil box here, or one of them. See, I have a small stencil box and then I have a large stencil box with more stencils in there. Uh, I also use this quite a bit for a lot of designs. Um, but as you see, there's all kinds of stuff in there, some lettering, some leopard print, stuff like that. I keep all that in here. Um, and then I have a small stencil box, which again, I sell some of these stencils right directly off the website. Like this is our water effects kit. And uh, as you can see, mine's pretty used. This is part of the bricks kit, uh, spider webs. And I have, you know, pretty much like a lot of stuff in here, you know, little stuff like this, uh, skulls, you know, pretty much whatever you're going to want to be painting. I have it in here. Roses, gears. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We got the PUBG guy. Right. And usually what I do with these to keep them from sticking is I'll try to have a shirt or something, right? When I'm done painting my shirts for the day. Or whatever and I try to stamp these on the shirt like just you know pat them down so they get a little bit of fibers on them and it kind of gets the sticky mess away and then I throw them in here right because you're gonna have a whole bunch of spray adhesive at the end of the day on all these so you're gonna want to keep all that but I got big boxes little stencils lots of big stencils and yeah then <laughs> I get a lot of people that ask about a compressor right so here's what I would recommend as the bottom line. 
is a California Air Tools 1P1060S. Again, I'll put a link down in the description for you. Um, it has a tank. It has a nice little pump here. It's kind of quiet. It's not like super silent, but it's quiet enough that if you're at a party or if you're at some kind of event, if they have music going, you won't even hear it because the music will be louder than this, guaranteed. And it's so easy to talk over. You're not yelling. People are not scared by it when it clicks on and stuff like that, right? So that's what I would recommend at least to start off with, right? Now, if we walk around here, if we look over here, this is what I have in my shop. Sorry for the fly tape. It's for flies, but you can see this is a 7 horsepower, 60 gallons. 135 psi i have a huge line right this line and then i have a regulator at the end over here now depending on what i'm painting some of my uh, attachments have water filters and if i need to i attach a water filter over there so if i'm painting like a vehicle or something like that i attach water filters <clears throat> but for most part just for airbrushing we don't get a lot of moisture in here so that's you know that's perfectly okay but I do have others. So here's the car, right? But over here behind the car, I can see my other compressors. So here's a Harbor Freight compressor. Um, how big is this? It says eight gallons, 125 PSI. That also works amazing, right? So that one still works. That's one I kind of use if I'm gonna go paint at somebody's shop. I'm going to go to the flea market and paint, do t-shirts. That thing works really good. It's really loud though. So usually I'll leave it in the trunk of the car or in the back seat, you know, with the windows down. It kind of hides the noise a little bit. Got a big long hose so I could run the hose to wherever I am. And yeah, you know, those are probably what I would recommend right off the bat. So if you want to get started airbrushing, um, you know, if you're going to spend money on your, on your airbrush, I would definitely recommend you spend a little bit of money on your compressor as well. Um, and more towards size as opposed to brand, right? Cause, uh, I've bought all kinds of brands and really what's going to help you out is that size of the tank, right? So if you're spraying a lot like t-shirts, uh, that tank over there on that, Harbor Freight Compressor, that works great. Um, as opposed to if I'm working with this one, I usually work with more lower pressure. You know, I'll run about 30, 35 PSI, maybe try to reduce paints a little bit and limit how much I actually spray, right? So I won't hold the trigger down constantly. With, the, with that other one, I'll hold the trigger down, run about 45 PSI, 50 PSI, and never have a problem. Um, these ones can tend to overheat on you, Again, all depends on what you're doing. I'd recommend the bigger the tank, the bigger, you know, the longer it's gonna last you basically, so. <sighs> okay, what else? Uh, we got all that. Um, so, yeah, I think that's pretty much all the basic stuff. You're gonna need a regulator to regulate your air, paints, different airbrushes, compressors, stencils, then, right, if you're going to be painting t-shirts, or honestly, if you're going to be painting canvases too, you're going to want a couple of boards, and you, you put these, right, if you get yourself an easel, like this one, you know, a little tripod stand that holds your canvas or whatever, it's called an easel, and then you're going to want to get your boards to go on the easel. And you want one of these, even if you're doing canvas, because it kind of holds um, the canvas in place so it doesn't like sway from side to side and it gives the easel a little bit of weight so depending on what kind of easel you get i guess if you get a really fancy easel or like a sturdy one or if you build one um you know you might not need it if you're doing canvases but for t-shirts you definitely need it right because these your t-shirt slides over this this separate your sides of the shirt right so whatever you spray on this side doesn't show up on the back side of the shirt um, you can find these boards at Harbor Freight. I mean, at Harbor Freight, really? At Home Depot. Um, and they're about like 10 bucks to $15. Um, and it's called Hardboard. 
It's usually right next to the pegboard. It's the same stuff as pegboard, except it doesn't have the holes in it, right? So all you're gonna do is cut these down to size. And I have various sizes, right? Like I have that one, I have that one. I have one I use for like pant legs. I have one for like kid shirts. And you know, I have a, like, you know, different size kid shirt, you know, maybe just a little bit bigger, something. I have lots of these different sizes. I have some really, really big ones as well. So you're gonna want these for doing shirts. Honestly, if you're painting shirts and you're looking to do like a market or something like this, you're gonna want like 20 of these. Like, you're gonna want like five of every size um, because if you start getting busy, uh, what becomes the thing is to load the shirts onto the board and then place the order on it and then you just kind of have an, uh, an assembly line where you're going and you're painting what's coming down the line, right? So that was the way we always did it. So here I am, I got some paper towels. If you're just starting out, if this is like, you know, practice, I guess, or beginning, and you've already picked your airbrush, you got your compressor all hooked up, and now you're like, how do I use the airbrush, right? So first off, if you're learning and you wanna practice, I would recommend getting some paper towels. Paper towels work great for practicing on. You don't have to worry about messing anything up because you could just fold it up the right away. If you really like what you paint, you could save it. You know, there's nothing wrong with a paper towel. But really, if you're just looking to practice, um, these will save you a lot of money in the long run, whether it's supposed to, you know, wanting to paint the board over and over or get canvases over and over or get t-shirts over and over. If you get good on paper first, it always helps. So you could use paper towels. You could use regular, you know, notebook paper. You know, paper just works really good because it's, you could get a large, large pack of paper or like a roll like this for a couple bucks and you're good to practice for a while. Right, so here what I'm gonna do is take some black. Make sure our airbrush is working okay. And uh, basically, like I showed you, if you push down, it's air. If you push down and pull back, it's paint. The important part is to remember that if you're going to pull back, it's a two-step two process. You need to push down first and then pull back. You don't ever pull back and then push down. You're gonna get splattered. Now, if that's an effect you're after, then of course, by all means, but if you're looking to make consistent lines or smooth lines, the key is to basically always hold down the air. Never let it go and use the, the trigger motion to control your paint, all right? So once you basically get the idea, it's good to practice consistency. So one of the main things I always try to show people to do is some dots. So you want to get hold down the air, make a dot, move over, make a dot, move over, make a dot. Simple, dots. You just pull back on the trigger, let it go. It starts building up your control of the trigger and as well as getting used to your brain, used to that idea of that paint's gonna come out when you pull it back, right? So after you get good at making dots and you can make them different sizes, you know, practice little dots, practice big dots, um, you know, <clears throat> it's always good to practice lines, right? So. Once you start getting pretty good with dots, you start getting a pretty good idea of how far you need to be to make the dot. Because obviously if you make a far dot, it's gonna make a big wide spray. And if you get close, you know, and don't be afraid to get close, um, it's gonna make a nice fine dot, right? So once you get good at dots, you're gonna wanna make some lines. And the thing you have to remember about a line is that it's just a moving dot. So if you can make this dot here, Right, get in close, pull it, push down on the air, pull back on the trigger. And the line is just a moving dot. So you just make the dot and then move. Right? Now, I have a lot of people that do these and they go, how do I get them nice and straight? Right? So 
I always uh, talk or try to tell people about their posture. So if you're standing up straight, you want this to be, you know, about as eyes, as high as my eyes and no lower than my belly button, right? I don't want to be bending over to paint stuff, right? That's always bad because you want to try to use your hips, right? To sway back and forth and your back and kind of like your shoulders to move action. The reason you want to use your body and not like your hands is because your body will pivot smoother. It, it's just a smoother motion. So you make your dot, you lock in your elbows to your side, use both hands, grab it, make your dot, twist your hips to the side. Bam, nice and straight. And once you get good at it, There you go, you can make lines, All right? So once you get pretty good at making lines and dots, you know, you're getting a pretty good hang of the understanding of the airbrush, right? And you could, from here, you could write your name, you, you could do little, little basic things, you know, <clears throat> but from here, what I recommend, whether you have a top feed, a bottom feed, whether you plan to paint miniatures, whether you plan to paint shirts, it doesn't matter is that you practice the dagger stroke, right? So a dagger stroke is a line that goes from thick to thin in the same motion. So you wanna start off a little bit far away, pull the air down, pull the air back, move down, get closer, and slowly slide that trigger forward, right? Again, push the air down, pull back, Move forward and down and slide that trigger forward. Thick to thin, right? And again, if you want it to be nice and straight, use your back to so you kind of slide your way down. Don't use your hands because your hands have play sideways. So lock in your elbows, push down the air, pull back, slide down, forward, let go of the air. And once you get good at them, Once you're getting pretty good, you, you, you know, your hand, it gets used to it. But I, this is about as fast as I would do them when I started. I sit here, pull back on the trigger, go down, and slide it forward. If it doesn't look perfect, it's fine. It's practice, right? That's why we're practicing. So just keep practicing. Eventually you can get them nice and fine and thin. And from here, you know, you can practice them going up, side to side, and that is what makes our stars. Right? These are dagger strokes going out. If you see somebody make a star by doing this, this is wrong. This is not airbrushing. This is airbrush. This is, I seen it and I didn't know how it was done and I did my best. This is how it's done. I have some dots around it. There you go. All right, so that's a basic beginning of the airbrush. All right? And people will be like, well, why do you stop after the dagger stroke? Show me how to shade, show me how to do this. The truth is, if you know how to draw, if you're already good with a pencil, and if once you get these dagger strokes to where you can just whip them out, you're probably good enough with an airbrush that you could create whatever you want. The dagger stroke is kind of like the, the, everything is in there, right? So if you need to make a thick line, thick, thin line, everything, it will fall within this dagger stroke. And once you're able to understand, you know, how to make thick and thick lines. The rest of it is just actually knowing what to paint, how to make it, and so on and so forth. And that brings me to my last thing, which is if you plan to paint t-shirts, hats, whatever, you're gonna need designs. And you're gonna need to show them 
You're gonna need to have them up. People need to see them. And the reason I have them on these and not like on actual hats is because they would take a lot of money and be a waste of resources to have a hundred hats up, but only two of them sell. Or maybe only one design repeatedly sells. What about all those other hats that you painted? You've just wasted all them hats and all that money on many things. When you could just cheaply buy this material, paint these, they don't take up as much space, right? So, and all you do is when people walk up, you tell them, yeah, those are our hat designs and we do them for this much, right? So, or you could have a thing that says hat designs and, you know, have these all pasted on there like the way I did. So we were getting ready to put these away and kind of going through our t-shirt designs, right? So if you're going to do t-shirts, you're going to need t-shirt designs. And this is a, like maybe a quarter of the, the stack that we take when we do t-shirts. But, uh, you know, we have everything bowling balls. You're going to need a softball in there. Maybe some marijuana design. A football is always popular. Marines. A heart. Hearts are like the number one seller. You know, we got a team out here called the Cyclones. Make sure to have that up. A soccer ball or a football, depending on where you're from. See that pattern that I have over here? It's always in there. I have it mixed up in different colors. That one's black and gray. A Colt. You know, you always need those. Again, we have hearts. And this heart, you know, is like a like separated out colors. You see this design's from 2016. And we keep them going. Like we have all of these designs just ready, right? And we set them all up all around. And if you want to make money airbrushing, you're going to need tons of designs. And every artist will make different designs course we all have about the same stuff you know hearts and whatnot but everybody's designs will be different and that's what makes it awesome that's what makes it interesting is that you don't have to make your designs look like mine yours are different all right so always keep that in mind don't think that you have to look a certain way or that you have to paint a certain way or make it look a certain way because that's completely not true you make those however you want, you know, it's up to you. But yeah, guys, I think I've covered everything there. Um, at least the, all the stuff I have here to get you going with your airbrush. I can't really think of anything else. I hope that helps you guys out. Um, again, 2019, this video, I'll probably make another one in a couple of years, update it. Maybe there's some new products by then. Doubt it, but we'll see. Um, but anyway, guys, remember, everything's linked down in the description. Um, the stencil sheets are down there, the paint, the airbrushes, um, the compressor, I'll have a link down there. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a good time airbrushing. I hope you guys um, do good. Um, as I've already seen, there's a lot of new airbrushing, like airbrushers coming up. I'm, I'm still around, but there's a lot of new guys. Um, coming up and I get a lot of messages saying, hey man, I watched your videos, I learned so much. And here's another one. And I hope this one kind of explains it a little better for all of you. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Later.